It's election night in Ohio and Indiana. Results scrolling right now at the bottom of your screen. Also on the web, WLWT.com. The big story, Loveland, finally breaking the school levy drought, passing a levy for the first time in nine years. And good evening, I'm Mike Dardis. Thanks for joining us at 11 o'clock. I'm Sheree Pillow. Unfortunately, though, a much different story for several other schools, Northwest local schools, failing by more than 5,000 votes tonight. So we have team election coverage for you this evening. WLWT News Sergeant Tara McKee live for us with the latest in the Forest Hills School District here in just a moment. But we begin tonight in Loveland. Look at the numbers, 56% in favor 44% against so this one passes John London live with the levy love in Loveland. Hi, John. Yeah, hi, Mike. Gracious in victory, no gloating and a resolve to try to heal this very split community. That's how Loveland school officials are reacting to tonight's levy success. Uh, they gathered tonight inside Hoppenberry Tap Room to track the results of tonight's vote, and this was a hard-earned result for school leaders. They felt good about the larger-than-anticipated turnout, also about the early numbers. Since last November's rejection, they focused more intently on swing voters, working those phones, particularly in the past few days, to try to bring them into the yes column. Tonight's margin of 330 or so reflects that work. It comes after another in a series of very divisive campaigns that has many seeing this as an unhealthy look for Loveland. Some voters remarking about that today, about the level of anger and confusion. Tonight, three voices from the school system on the repair that they believe must come next. Everybody behind me worked very, very hard, but it's just, it's a good community feel, and uh, it's not about winning or losing. It's just about doing good things for kids, and we're gonna keep doing that. And, make sure we treat, keep trying to earn the trust of the community. We also need to, I think, approach our community and find out what else we can do to bring them together to support Loveland schools wholeheartedly. We have to find a way to start to stitch this community back together again. Uh, it's been a very rough almost five years here, and I hope, I just hope that tomorrow morning we all start to wake up and we find a way to be able to talk to each other again and find some common ground. And part of that common ground involves going upstate. Those three do not see an upside if a significant part of the Loveland community and schools are not aligned. So they'd like to see a concerted community effort to get the state legislature, state lawmakers to finally fix the funding formulas so schools don't have to keep going back to the same well all the time. The takeaway message tonight, they're grateful, they're well aware that there's repair work ahead in order to heal a divided community. Live in Loveland, John London, WWT News 5. John, thanks so much. Loveland isn't the only school putting a lot of money on the line tonight. Forest Hills school officials said that if their levy failed tonight, budget cuts and staff reductions would be next. But it did not fail. The results coming in in the last hour or so, it's a yes vote for that levy. And uh, the numbers are on the screen behind me right now. WLWT News 5, Jatera McGee, live from the Deadlow Brewery. She was on live at 10 o'clock when the party started. Uh, Jatera, I have a feeling it could be a groggy, slow morning for some of those teachers in that district. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, it may be. There is school tomorrow, so they had to clear out of here once they got the last of that celebration in. You know, a 6.9 mil levy officially approved for the Forest Hills School District. Superintendent Larry Hooks saying that this is a win for the kids, and they get to tell them tomorrow that no cuts are coming. The watch party is over, but there was a lot of emotional celebrations happening. Uh, the, today, almost 14,000 people came out to vote to the polls. The levy passed by about 700 votes. The district already cut almost a million dollars from its budget, and the district said 1.8 million more would be cut if this levy failed. That included teacher cuts, transportation restructuring, students paying more for athletics and the arts, but crisis averted. Property owners will now be paying an extra $20 a month for every $100,000 in property value. So the average family is going to be paying about $700 more a year. Voters we talked with say it's worth it. While I disagree with our school board on almost everything, I believe that voting against the levy only hurts the kids mm -hmm. and especially those that are underprivileged in the district. Value of education is extremely important. Mm -hmm. 
no matter what, you can't really put a value on it. But also, my house is here. So if I want my value of my property to stay high, I want the schools to be good. I chose Anderson and Forest Hills because of the school system. Mm -hmm. And that from two former parents in the district. Superintendent Hook telling me today that if voters got this done, they will guarantee they won't ask for another levy for at least three years. Won't go back to taxpayers asking that. And hopefully they can push it a little further. We're live in California this evening. Jatara McGee. WWT News 5. All right, Jatera, thanks for that update. Boy, a much different story, though, for Northwest local schools tonight. They were asking for a long-term commitment from taxpayers there. And check it out here. Boy, it failed dramatically tonight. You can see the numbers 100% by the way of the voters or the votes are in. 75% of voters against this levy. It failed by more than 5,000 votes. Now, this impacts Northwest High School as well as Colerain High School. School. The district was asking for a 40 year 4.98 mil bond issue to fund phase two of construction projects to replace old school buildings. Now it's looking like that just might not happen. And in Butler County, a proposed earned income tax to help school district operations for Edgewood City Schools. Also, as you can see here, failing tonight, the district says that this could result in reducing class choices and course offerings, larger class sizes, restructuring, uh, extracurriculars, perhaps staff reductions and reduced or even eliminating transportation for some students. You can see about 57% of the voters there in Edgewood City Schools against that levy tonight. So you can see the results on your screen. So far, those against the levy taking the lead by more than, well, it looks like about 200 votes so far. In Warren County, Blanchester Local Schools asking voters to approve a 1% income tax for operating expenses and a 5.2 mil levy would actually pay for capital improvements. The numbers are in 90%. Uh, you can see top right corner of the votes have been counted and it's a tight one here. 1.2% is the dividing factor right now. 50.6% uh, for and just under 50% against that one too close to call. So you can see election results scrolling at the bottom of your screen all night long. Uh, you can also find those results on WLWT.com. We're talking about Franklin City Schools, Carlisle School Levy, Ross Local Schools, Winton Woods, and a whole lot more. Again, on our website, WLWT.com.